yeah, my name is Cedric. Stations thus far, um, and I'm here today joined by Jonathan. Uh, he and I have been chatting for for some time. He was actually supposed to be episode one, and then life happened. But <laughs> here we are. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited about today's episode, and I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about today. It's a real mixture of things. Um, but I'll let Jonathan introduce himself and his journey so far, and then we'll see where it takes us. But hi, Jonathan. Sure. Uh, yeah. Hi, Cedric. Uh, thank you very much for um, having me. So yeah, I, I'm Jonathan. Um, I'm working as a senior software engineer at uh, uh, Lydian right now. Um, I, my background is, is very varied. I, I started my career in the video game uh, industry uh, few, uh, quite a few years ago and then switched to augmented reality, virtual reality, brain computer interfaces, and then lately, uh, crypto uh, with uh, Lillian um, and uh, yeah. A real, a real range, a real journey, hey? Um, but it's exciting. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of get into that and uh, yeah, why, why don't you start there then? Let's start with Lillian. What, what's kind of currently been going? How long have you been there for at the moment? So I've been working at Lillian since, uh, since uh, six months um, and uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, it is my first uh, like full rust uh, professional job so uh yeah it was quite exciting uh it is still quite exciting um and uh, because like nillion is basically developing a network of um uh, like allowing you to to um, um uh, to uh, uh, compute some data in a decentralized trustless um uh, uh, manner and the idea is that you submit some data you use a token to pay for the, the service and then uh, people who uh, have um, who who, who uh, are in, in this network can then uh, provide some uh, uh, computing resources to compute this data. And the, the interesting thing is that this data it's not uh, well encrypted per se, but it's more like uh, modified in such a way that the nodes cannot understand what the data is, but they mm -hmm. can perform computation on it. And then these data bits called the particles. They are, they are then reassembled uh, at the end of the process. And then the, the person, the customer who wants data uh, computed can then get uh, the results. And, and so this is a very, this is trustless because like, yeah, no one can understand the data. So it's good for, um, amongst other things, for uh, sensitive data, uh, you know, health, uh, for example, or uh, I mean, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, yeah. It's it's really interesting. Like I mean, the project is super super interesting, obviously, and I, I know it's it's got a lot of successful kind of uh, viewership. I know quite a few people I've spoken to in the past have heard of of the company or the work at least before, which is always a, a good positive sign. Uh, I suppose what what interested you in this work in itself then, because it's not like a a traditional I suppose journey into yeah the, the crypto world or the decentralized data kind of world, whatever. Like from gaming or is it and I'm completely off are there like a lot of similarities between what you were doing and, and transitioned into there I don't, I don't know what we'll obviously get into what you were doing before a bit more as well but what what drew you into this project specifically um so I think well I, I wanted to work with Rust uh, which was like the, sure. the main point I would say and I wanted to discover something new you know like uh uh, my, 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 in my previous job, I did work on, on decentralized uh, um, uh, um, system. It was a decentralized uh, um, um, well messaging system. Uh, so I, I had already this notion of of uh, yeah of of how to manage a, a cluster of, of computers that are uh, you know where the data is, is shared between them. How do you uh, come back uh, when something crashed, for example, and that kind of things. Um, but so, so it was not completely different. I was already working in the, uh, when networking side, um, so there are some similarities. Uh, so it's not that different, uh, sure. I would say, but, uh, I didn't know much about the, the crypto world in general. Uh, so uh -huh. for me, that this was like a good, good way to, to, uh, to learn about it, I'd say. Um, nice. And, and I suppose like, I think the main question then, because in the Rust landscape at the moment, anyway, I would say 70 to 80 percent of, of the work is is dominated, uh, the Rust work and, and the Rust world is dominated in crypto or, or blockchain, Web3 style, style projects. Like th th there's always a bit of a, 
I don't know. There's always a, a stance on all people either hate it or they're scared of it or, or whatever it is. Like now that you've been doing this for six months, is it maybe as scary as you thought to, to jump into the crypto world? Has it been a nice transition? Is it what you expected or a bit different? Um, I mean, it's definitely quite complex. Uh, this is something that I... That is a bit, I mean, like I, I knew the engineering uh, complexity, like my previous job, I already worked with that and, and even before. But what's new here is the uh, uh, mass complexity. Like we really, we have like a mass team uh, and it's, it's very interesting to work with, with them because they have uh, like such a good understanding on, on how that works. And the challenge is, of course, how to implement that as an engineer. You know, how do you mm. uh, understand that uh, enough so you can do an implementation that is working uh, as as expected, fast, and that kind of things, uh, and and still also understandable for other uh, well engineers uh, yeah. that come after you. So it's important to write comments uh, as usual uh, to make a code that that's as readable as possible. Um, and uh, I think for that, yeah, that's what I expected. Uh, so I knew there would be a strong uh, cryptography part uh, with it. And uh, I, yeah, I, I was always uh, curious because I never had a chance to work with that before. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And how, how did you find that that kind of learning curve getting into, into this industry versus what you were doing before? D did it take long? Is it fundamentally, is it all just still, you know, proper engineering practices and, and thinking like from an engineer standpoint, is it as crypto heavy as you as you thought or like, yeah, how how long did it take for you to kind of get into your rhythm before you felt comfortable? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the system is big enough so that you can start working on it uh, only like a small part without understanding fully like all the details of the whole um, of the whole system. So like uh, I, I can work and understand uh, my domain, uh, what I'm working in, without having to understand all the mathematical uh, papers that are used uh, in the background by the math team. Um, so uh, in, in that regard, it's actually fine. Uh, the system is still co complex, but yeah, getting into it uh, was not that that difficult. Uh, I wouldn't say I understand all of it, but uh, I have a, a general view and I think that's important. And the team is also trying to produce a lot of uh, diagrams, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, documentation to understand, to, to have like other, um, the rest of the team to understand uh, how things work. And I think that's very important because like a system can be quite simple, but if you are completely, if you are kept in the dark without mm. having anyone or anything to to explain to you how things work um just by reading code understanding what is doing you know in, in the grand um, view let, let's say it's quite difficult um and i think rust uh, does help a lot uh well with that yeah i was gonna ask so uh, how uh, has it has it always been a uh, rust house there at Nillian? to, uh, to your yeah. knowledge yeah yeah okay, they, they so started, yeah yeah that's cool and uh yeah how from what you've seen anyway, how, how do you think that has benefited the project entirely versus using something entirely different, I don't know, like Python or whatever other, insert any language here, right? How, how do you think in your given, you know, project now, how do you think Rust has really helped you or the team? Um, I mean, I would say it's the typical things, uh, like it really helps with uh, being uh, um, uh, like it, it's a statically typed language, so you so you use the types as much as possible to explain uh, what you are trying to do. You use uh, new types to like uh, have like um, a specific type to describe a certain uh, 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 unit or, or something. Uh, so you don't have like just an any type uh, like <laughs> like you have in JavaScript. Uh, uh, or so um, this is this really helps to understand things. Uh, I would say it's also um, because you know it will be quite fast, um, mm -hmm. which is always important if you do computation because, of course, uh, if it's faster, that means it uses less energy, so it's less expensive, uh, so it's always good to have. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's also the uh, the, um, the safety is, is very important um, because here, if you 
if you add two numbers, you want to check if there is an uh, um, um, overflow uh, going on. Uh, and of course, for I mean, we use uh, big int instead of uh, the your usual um, uh, uh, integer sizes because we have numbers that can be uh, way bigger than what you can store in in 32 or or, or 64 uh, bits. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's still yeah, it's just th this. Um, confidence you have that if something is compiling it's mm -hmm. already a good step you know like you still have to write tests and everything but uh, and i think this is this is huge i mean uh, that's that's one of the reasons why i i wanted to move to to rust um yeah because I, i've worked a lot with uh javascript in the past uh typescript is also quite good i mean it's definitely an, for me at least <laughs> an improvement uh, above javascript and uh it was very good. I worked with Go also, uh, which is a great language. Uh, mm -hmm. It compiles very fast, which is one advantage uh, <laughs> uh, um, if you compare it to the rest, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, like it, it adds so many, uh, like it has so many features that help you uh, write good good programs, like. Uh, that uh, because of course it's quite recent, so you know it, it could just like yeah. see all the the mistakes, all the things that like that have changed. Uh, if you compare to C plus plus, for example, which is quite old, uh, and uh, so of course it could just um, uh, well, it could just uh, uh, start anew with uh, all the um, features that we expect nowadays in in the uh, um, programming um, language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that brings me on to two points there. How how a number one from a from uh, from the compiler's perspective or your perspective on the compiler, how how did you find learning that then and going through the motions of being probably told no quite a few times when when working on Rust? I think from the conversations I've had with the other two so far, but also just in general, you know, I speak to hundreds of engineers uh, a month and it, the, the stories are always the same. I think that's that's what we talk about with the learning curve. From my experiences like the learning curve is tough when getting into rust because you're actually just told no a lot of the time and, and sometimes it comes to perspective either you like being told no because then the code that you write you know is being done correctly or it's a big blocker and you never go back to rust again because you're just like well actually i just want to build something but like in your experiences how has that helped improve maybe your overall code and and, and the way that you kind of write things has it helped you or has it just been Hey, this is how it is now, and this is what my life looks like. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it has been it has been great, and it's still it's still great because I really prefer uh, being uh, well bitten by the compiler sure. uh, early on rather than having uh, having everything compiled fine, and then when I run it, uh, you know, either it fails fails directly, which is the best situation, or it, everything goes fine, and then you discover a few months later that oh, there is like I don't know memory <laughs> leak, or there is some uh, some uh, 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 non, uh, some uh, undefined behavior that just makes everything crash, you know, and uh, yeah. uh, that's and that's that's very difficult to debug. That costs a lot of money for companies. Uh, so I, I I generally prefer facing problems um, head on as early as possible. So um, it creates some frustrations, uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like sure. uh, you just. And sometimes you don't understand, like uh, the error messages are quite good, but sometimes you just don't, but why, you know, understand why it, that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and I think in that case, tools like ChatGPT is actually quite helpful because I just give it uh, my code and tell him, you know, what, what's, what's the problem here? And it can give, not always, but sometimes a very good description where the problem is. And then I'm like, ah, yes, of course, and that's this problem. Uh, so um, this is that's I mean surprisingly uh, this has really this has become an important tool that uh, I, I'm using multiple times a day I would say so. to to check what you're doing yeah okay that's interesting yeah again I've yeah, I mean I've always known that 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 well I use it day to day for for the certain tasks that I need in my job which is obviously very different to yours but um, it's interesting to see how that's actually used in in the real world on, on your side as well. Okay, cool. That's And that actually is maybe a helpful tool for me to kind of pass on to others to kind of suggest, hey, use that to your advantage, right? And, and kind of let it work for you. Um, the, the other point you briefly, briefly touched upon was on testing uh, and testing at work. If, if you wouldn't mind kind of explaining a little bit about how that works for you now at, at Nillian and how the team kind of go about doing that. It's 
uh, last week's episode um, um, with Maxwell was all around testing and and trying to create uh, an environment and a community maybe um, pretty soon around like discussing how teams go about doing it and, and putting their tests together just because it's not necessarily always been discussed in the Rust space, right? Obviously in every other language, it's it's like very, very common in Rust. It seems to not yet be the most common thing just yet, or maybe it has, and, and I've not kind of come across those pockets or had the, the the pleasure of talking to people about that. So yeah, in your specific cases, how how is the team kind of getting on with, with the testing practices? Like what, what, what have you got in place? Um, so, I mean, that actually sounds very exciting, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, so what we, what we do now is that we write, uh, I mean, it's quite typical, we write uh, unit tests if we write a feature to just like text, uh, test the lower parts um, mm -hmm. to check if everything is producing uh, the expected uh, well results. And then we have some, uh, some uh, functional tests and uh, well end-to-end -end tests where we really go from the beginning uh, where you provide uh, some, uh, some some code actually because for now we use uh, Python uh, so like yes the Rust is yeah. in the background but we do have one uh, uh, Python client uh, because a lot of people uh, in in the crypto community uh, use uh, um, Python so uh, this is one of the one of the languages yeah. but there will be others uh, later and uh, and this Python code is then uh, uh, Converted into an intermediary um, um, in intermediary uh, uh, representation, and then this is then converted into a bytecode. Um, but so so yeah, with this end-to-end -end test, we just start with the Python code, and then we we see uh, we we run this bytecode, and then check that everything uh, is as expected. So and then the content of this test, it's I would say. The things you would expect, uh, I would say, I suppose most of the time, like if you add uh, a, a new type, for example, like a, like a, a decimal number, uh, then you do some computations with it. You know, you add, multiply, and then you check, check that results. That the result, that, that the result um, makes sense. Uh, and uh, we also have some uh, well benchmarks um, that are run uh, once per week, if I remember uh, correctly. Okay. I haven't really work with that much uh, but um, yeah we have a, a CI system of course uh, uh, that just like checks after each commit that everything compiles and uh, yeah you also run some um, benchmarks gotcha cool interesting all right well I'll see what um, how other people are doing it and make sure that um, well if people have got questions on it I'm sure they can kind of pop you a message hopefully and kind of cool. see that um, cool I mean it all sounds very interesting uh and yeah obviously it's it's awesome to see that you're now six months into the the professional uh i suppose world of, of rust now as well and it's not just been in your own time how like i don't know if you can give tips but it's the number one question i get asked and the number one question anyone gets asked who works in rust is how you know how do i get into rust how, how do i kind of get a job in this professionally um, I've given my tips plenty of times. I've, I've always said to try and get involved as, as much as possible in any sort of open source work. Obviously have some examples ready from, you know, that you can kind of show off to people and then try and get in that way. Um, but like, what would your tips be from someone who kind of eventually made it in there? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree. Uh, like showing something that you have done is very important. Uh, I think it's the best probably would be to show something that you have finished that is working like that people are really using it because that also show you show, shows uh, people like how you uh, react with PRs that people open you know to to fix problems that they find or that to suggest new features um, and I think that uh, that's important to see our people that report uh, some bugs you know uh, how fast do you fix them and everything. Uh, which is challenging because, of course, especially if it's like a, a, time, a project you do in your free time, uh, this can take some time. I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. developing a project since 2005, uh, and uh, it's just like in the, in the latest years, um, I, it's it's getting a bit slower because I, I've moved on to other things. And yeah. but um, but yeah, like yeah, having to show a project that you really uh, well maintain or that you have maintained for a long time, I think that's very good. 
Um, in general, I would say practicing is very important. I mean, I, like uh, when I was looking for, for a job, I, I spent all my weekends mostly practicing, uh, uh -huh. like either on, on personal projects, like uh, very, very small games, uh, for example, sure. um, or just like a take home tasks, actually, which is like it, it's a very good way to practice because then you really have a, a, a goal. Uh, sometimes it's clearer than others, but then, then, then other times, but um, it's it's a good practice. And then trying to keep uh, yourself uh, well up to date with the new, newer versions of the language and with Rust, it happens quite often uh, because it's like, for example, a concrete example. Uh, to get into Million, I had a take-home task, which I worked on, and I added um, uh, let else, which is like a construct that came out a few version ago, versions ago, but not that very long time. And uh, later on, one of my colleagues uh, told me that actually he saw that I used that, and he thought that this was good because that meant that, you know, I meant that I was like, uh, uh, you know, like, been around a while. Uh, today. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. um, that that kind of stuff, I think, is always good. Uh, also, that's really interesting, and, and maybe that's something that I can talk to about with with some of the teams that I work with now um, in passing out the the, the take home assignments. Just and people can work on it in their own free will. Because I've got, I mean, I've got plenty. There's plenty of teams that we work with who require that. Um, and I, I'm always, <laughs> might be controversial, I'm quite a fan of the take home assignments in, in the Rust space anyway, because it gives you an opportunity to really work on something and show off what you're capable of doing and what you can learn. Um, more so than the online tests, which usually go through different data sets or algorithmic work or whatever, like it, which we're not quite there yet in the Rust world, in my opinion. But a lot of people probably disagree with me on, on that. Not that that's not built out, of course it is, but I mean from a from a testing ability or from a, uh, testing, I mean, testing candidates as to whether they're good at Rust or good enough to, to potentially work for you. Um, doing it in a quick hours burst online probably isn't the, usually the best indicator of doing those things when you know you could give someone some serious time to work on a big project. But it's a great idea, and it and it's something maybe that I can talk to about with some of the teams uh, in giving that information out and letting people have a try just for fun or you know to to encourage working from home. OK, thanks. That's, that's pretty helpful. I mean, we'll get into some of the those topics a little bit uh, shortly in, in regarding to where do we learn and, and where do you kind of get information from anyway. But um, there were two other topics you wanted to chat about. Obviously, prior to Nillian, you were in the gaming space. I, you know, from my travels and from my conversations with with people that is historically and still now really been dominated by C++ development. Um, I don't know. I don't know what your hot take is on it. I, I feel like every conversation I've had in the past has been it's a really difficult to move people from C++ into Rust on the gaming front just because a lot of the code bases are so systemically written in, in C++ and have been around for so long that a, a big transition into Rust would be apparently almost impossible um, or it would take a very, very long time. And, and most of the feedback I've had is like, if you get an opportunity to maybe inject some rust into that work, that's the best way to try and get it involved. But in your experiences, of, you know, I, I don't know if, if uh, I can't remember you saying, was was your background in C++ for, for the gaming projects or were you writing stuff in, in other languages? So my first job was in C++ um, okay. and it was on a game engine that's completely unknown uh, but a uh, very old uh, style with like bits lots of bit of c inside uh, and that's re-implemented the, the the how to copy a string for example um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i would say yes this is um the problem, yes, exactly, is that you, you have like a lot of code base that's written in C++ or C or a mix of, of both, uh, which is not ideal. And so if you want to port all of that, you have to rewrite everything. And of course, it's an investment that's huge because, you know, I mean, many people underestimate the complexity of video games um, because yeah. you have, you know, sound input, uh, the, 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 the like 3D, the, the display, the UI in 2D and... So um, it's, it, yeah, it's like, it's a huge project. Um, and I mean, nowadays, most people use uh, already made the uh, uh, engines like uh, Unity 3D, uh, mm -hmm. for example. And uh, and this is written in C++ inside, but then the scripts you write are in C Sharp. 
so it's a bit easier to understand than than uh, um, than C plus. C plus, sorry. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, I would say newer games game engines that are less known uh, can be written in Rust. I mean, like for example. Um, uh, ma uh, macro quad is uh, a very mm -hmm. uh, simple one uh, that people can use with not, without knowing all the features of, of Rust. Just like very simple things, I can already do some. I can, they, can, ah, they can already um, do some some simple games with that. Um, or uh, well, Bevy is a great example of, mm -hmm. of a game engine written in Rust uh, that really uses like. All the features of the language to to make things uh, as parallel as possible, uh, so it's very efficient, very fast. Um, so that's really great. But those have been used in commercial projects, but of course it's uh, not that many yet. Uh, if you compare it to Unity 3D, which is like huge, like there, yeah. uh, I don't know, ten thousand games uh, per year that are made uh, with it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit. Like change is always complicated, you know. Uh, yeah. Where whatever you do, uh, so. Uh, so yeah, do we I, see I, a future in it or not? Is it realistic? Do, are are we? Or how long might it take for us to actually really get Im embedded into, into the, the, the gaming world? Uh, well, I mean, I Who can't knows? predict the future. But, sure. Uh, I would say. It will probably, if it if it happens, it probably happen more in in new game engines like uh, uh, like uh, Bevy, for example, rather than existing ones migrating to Rust. Uh, seems less likely for me, but yeah. it's just too much upfront cost, I imagine, too much uh, effort, and it takes a lot. It will take a longer time, right? Um, yes, exactly. But is it not so? Is it not possible to integrate pockets of Rust into these existing? Uh, challenges, well, or is it too complicated given the layers of what's going on? The the problem is that you need um, an ABI, like you need a, a binary interface that is stable, uh, yeah. so you can call functions from the one to the other. And for now, it's not the case. C++ doesn't have that, um, and so you have to use C. Um, so uh, usually what you do is that you can create like a library, for example, and then you create a C interface with functions, and then you have another language. Um, that, that's how, usually how communication is done between like a module, like in Python, for example, you create a module and then you have an interface in C and then you can call it from C++. Maybe, maybe there are other ways, but anyway, that's one way of, of doing sure. it. Uh, so between Rust and C++, you could, you, could, you could do that, for example, but it would be complicated to use uh, like uh, more advanced features of Rust uh, from C++ uh, and, and, and you know, and the contrary. So, I mean, it, it can be done, um, but you also have to, 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 it's not just like a complexity of implementing, it's also sometimes a runtime cost, uh, because every time when you switch from one language to another, uh, the, the um, like there is no uh, uh, garbage collection in C++ or Rust, so that's, that's, thing, that's one thing that makes things a bit easier, but you still have a different uh, pool of memory uh, that's allocated, and so you have to copy the data so that you know the, the mm -hmm. Rust system can manage this, uh, and um, and this this ha has a cost also. So, uh, but I suppose for modules that are really uh, independent and don't need to be called every frame. Um, I think that could be possible. Yeah, definitely. Interesting. Well, I'm intrigued to hear. Hopefully, there's some people watching and listening uh, who do work in gaming now and have had the pleasure or the challenge of of integrating Rust into their work right now. And maybe they've got some some thoughts and comments as well. We shall see. But it's an interesting it's an interesting topic, and it's one that I've discussed a few times or tried to um, give my give my thing. Anyway, uh, finally, the the final kind of area that we wanted to discuss as well is obviously you, you still maintain quite a big. Uh, well, you still do lots of work in your own time, right? And you have your own like mini projects, which is um, which is great. I think it's the it's the main jealous, main thing that I'm jealous about when it comes to my job versus I suppose your job or your world is that it's very difficult to still remain creative or or utilize the skill sets that I use recruiting um, <laughs> in my own kind of personal time. So I'm, I'm always it's it's my favorite kind of topic to discuss with people. But um, yeah, you're also doing some Rust work uh, from home, like more in the embedded space, right? 
Uh, yeah, exactly. So it, it's very simple. It's just a hobby. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. I, I'm really not like a professional in that, but um, it's um, yeah. I, I really like to uh, create something more uh, that that's uh, uh, that you can uh, interact with your fingers uh, without using uh, um, like a keyboard or a mouse. You know, you mm -hmm. really. Um, I mean, the one I'm working on now is some kind of uh, mini gaming, uh, like like a Game Boy, but really a lot simpler with just like a few buttons a uh, small screen and exactly. and some uh, well buzzer uh, so uh, it's basically using a uh, raspberry uh, pico uh, that i program in rust with um, rp uh, pico crate uh, and um, that's that's actually great it, it's it's challenging because of course you don't have much uh, memory um, so you really have to Think differently. You cannot use the the, the standard library uh, from Rust, uh -huh. uh, so using no STD is also a challenge because, of course, <laughs> many crates uh, were not um, are not made to be to to um, to be usable without the the standard library. So, um, but I, I really like it. I mean, it, it's um, it's actually quite fast to 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 develop. Uh, there are a lot of examples, and the community is is amazing. I mean, there are like, uh, you know, people who um, create issues or PRs uh, in 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 the. I mean, in an RP Pico, for example, uh, quite often. Uh, mm -hmm. So you really like it's easy to to find help, and and the code quality is usually quite good, uh, which is like something I, I really like. Is that the in other languages, sometimes you have a choice. You have like many different ways of doing one thing. And with mm -hmm. Rust, most of the time, like there can be, be multiple ways, but most of the time it's more uh, well limited. Um, and I think that's actually, that ma makes things better because it, it makes the code easier to read. And I think that, I don't know, generally the quality is better. Okay. Um, from what I, I, I saw, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I wonder if it's like because the the compiler is uh, the language itself is more strict, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's the only reason. I don't know why. Uh, maybe, maybe because the community is a bit more senior, so they have better practices in terms of testing, mm -hmm. for example. Um, mm -hmm. Could be uh, one of the reasons. Uh, so interesting. Uh, but... And where are you engaging with those people? Sorry, like what what kind of platforms are you chatting to to people? Uh, well, it's often on uh, well GitHub uh, when I, I find okay. a bug somewhere, or um, you know, or if I ask uh, how to do something, uh, or sometimes create a PR to add a, a, a new feature, um, and the feedback is, is usually very good. Uh, so that's, um, that's always that, good. That's really good. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you 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 like usually when you have a a project uh, like that, you you solve um, like you. You find some bugs, and instead of just like correcting, fixing it for yourself, and then that's it, then you just ignore it. Uh, it's really nice to be able to 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 uh, contribute back to the community, and that hopefully that helps other people after. So yeah. uh, I think that's very important. Uh, I love that. Awesome. And how, do you think the work that you're doing on this is uh, helping you in your day job stuff as well? D does it kind of encourage you to think differently from that standpoint, or are they literally two very different? Uh, entities in itself? Um, no, I think that any practice is good. Um, okay. Because, like, it, it, yeah, sometimes I, I solve problems uh, in one project, and that that uh, reminds me, oh, yeah, I had a similar problem, and then I solved it, but it's not great. So I can yeah. use the same <laughs> the same way I solved the problem uh, there to fix it there. So, um, no, I think that uh, all practice is very good. Uh, Cool. So regardless if it's like a game, uh, if it's like a microcontroller programming or uh, whatever. Keeps you sharp. Uh, okay. Yeah. You know? so, so what, sorry? Keeps, keeps you sharp, you know? Keeps yeah, you exactly. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay, nice. Well, thanks very much for expressing. And, and can people find that work anywhere? Like where, where can they go and see that, that, that kind of work on your GitHub, I assume? Um, so I haven't published uh, that yet because I would like to have something that's working. For now, I have... Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I have like a, just like um, some board I, I printed. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, so it's very simple. Uh, and uh, I'm still working on, on the uh, software part. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I, I will probably in the end uh, make it an open um, hardware also. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, because cool. I'm also interested in, in professionals uh, who really work with uh, electronics, uh, you know, as the day job, because I'm sure I did many things like wrong or <laughs> not ideally. And, and sometimes there, there is some odd behavior and you just don't understand what's going on there. So having feedback on that would be great, uh, definitely. Okay, cool. Well, we'll see. Once it's out there, I'll make sure to, to publish it so people can see. But um, how, like, I know this is like a such a big question, but like, how long do you think that will take for you to kind of get things finished, you know, life permitting? Uh, well, I mean, I try to work on it a bit every weekend, if possible. Um, but it, it's a matter of, um, like for personal project, it's really a matter of mood, you know. Sometimes you are in the mood to work on that, and then you sure. spend all your evenings, all your weekends on it, <laughs> and sometimes not so much, and then you just like play games or work on something else. And uh, so it's difficult to predict, but probably, I don't know, uh, four, four or five months. Uh, all right, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year then. Hey? Yeah. We'll see. Okay, well, lovely. Well, look, I've only got a couple of other questions. Um, I, I tried to ask what I have been in, in the last two episodes, and, and I think it's going to be a running theme for me moving forward. But um, uh, I'd just like to ask about learnings and where you go to uh, to, to learn. So, so yeah, right, right now, obviously, you're six months professionally, but you've been working with Rust for years anyway. Where, where do you go to learn new things mainly now? What's kind of your sources usually? Mm. I mean, now when I have a Rust specific problem, well, I mean, I I, I do use uh, ChatGPT. As I said, this is one way. Another way would just be to look on uh, Stack uh, 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 Overflow, for example, because often people have a similar problem. That's it, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, that's it. I mean, when I started, I I, I bought the, the Rust programming uh, language book and uh, watched the videos from John uh, Jenset. Uh, which, which uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they were great uh, to start with, uh, definitely. Good. Uh, and they were also very good for answering questions about, uh, like, that I got asked during job interviews. Uh, okay. It was really funny. Like, I just watched a video about uh, how does the, um, how does the uh, async await system works in Rust? You know, like, uh, how does how is it uh, uh, how is it uh, implemented in the background? Mm -hmm. And I watched this video, and then the next day I had like a job interview, and they asked exactly the same question. It was just perfect. Uh, uh, right. So uh, yeah, no, it, it's really great. Good. Okay. I mean, he still posts videos now. I think John, right? I've seen him do a couple here and there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, just for anyone who wants to, I think he's got a YouTube page. So have a look. Um, yeah. I mean, that needs leads nicely then. Like, if if you were to start Rust all over again now, right? You've forgotten everything that you've ever learned. Uh, well, no, you remember what you've learned now, but you just start again. What, like, what would you do differently learning now from, from scratch, knowing what you know now, if anything? Um, uh, I think it was, it's actually fine. I mean, because I, 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 I mean, me personally, but you know, that's maybe it could be different for someone else. Yeah. Uh, that's I really like to learn by practicing. So. Uh, and and practicing is, I would say, probably how I learned eighty percent of what I know now, uh, being doing my day job or personal project. So um, yeah, I would say yeah, the twenty the twenty percent is like videos or, or books. Uh, okay. I think it went well, but of course for me, since I have like a strong C plus plus background, that really helped a lot. Uh, yeah. So if someone who has learn at school with, uh, I don't know, Python, JavaScript, uh, it will be more challenging because, of course, you have less constraints about uh, who owns this memory, like who owns this variable, you know, uh, and that kind of thing. Or do I copy or do I move something, uh, which is yeah. uh, something that exists in C++ also, uh, so that helped a lot. Uh, but Again, I think there are some, some books that are um, specifically designed for people who start from one language uh, to, to Rust. Um, and uh, this probably could help, um, I would say. OK, cool. Trial by error then. I, I think loads of people have said that to me as well. You've just got to get stuck in and give it a go. And I suppose not give up with it. Like if, if you truly want to, you know, we, we hear about or people hear about all of the pros and positives about, about the language. and people like yourself who come on here and, and talk to us about your experiences with it. Uh, 
you know, we know the positives, like I said, and the strengths of, of the language, but um, as long as you can get through that, <laughs> that compiler and being told no and keep pushing, then you'll be fine. But it's interesting that 80% for you was was just by doing. Um, so jump on in, I suppose, is a, is a top tip. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is that you need to find a project that 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 is fun for you. Like uh, it could be solving a, a math problem or it could be just like making um, a client uh, talk with a server and then you know you, you you design system there and then the server can can be um, can you use multiple uh, cores for example to process things fa faster uh, or it could be making a, ver a very simple 2D game for example uh, mm -hmm. and I think that's very motivating you know when you just start something and then you have something on the screen it could be just like some square moving on a screen you know like, like ah yeah. you know I did something that, that's working that's visible and I think that's very motivating. Because if you just like try to go into the deep, deep bits and then never see something, I mean, some people are fine with that. But I would say, for me at least, it would, it's easier to just like have something uh, visible that I can show other people, I can show my partner, <laughs> my family, or you know, j j just for myself. You know, that's the thing. That's yeah, awesome. this is what I've made. Something tangible. You know, something mm -hmm. to actually yeah. show. Okay, cool, cool. I suppose my final, final question then is, um, like, where do you see Rust heading in the next kind of couple of years. But what's your kind of hot take on it? Um, I'm always intrigued to hear about people's thoughts. Um, well, I think that the the fact that it, it, it it's loved quite a lot by uh, programmers in general uh, is a very good sign. And I think that seeing that it's used in different domains uh, is also very good. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it will replace C++ like tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think it will ever replace it because we always use all systems, like, I mean, all systems. We always use uh, programming languages like like Fortran and COBOL still nowadays. So yeah. it shows that even like uh, things that are very old can still be used. So I, I'm sure there will be C++ projects uh, in, sure. in the future. But uh, like f for domains like crypto, for example, which are quite new, uh, mm -hmm. It's really exciting to see that that Rust has uh, a big, uh, big role in there, um, and uh, so, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Maybe maybe there will be a new language, programming language that's great coming in two years, and that that's going to to uh, will replace it. But uh, yeah, but but for now, I think this is. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I would expect that it has a great future. Um, Good. I mean, you've invested a lot of time in it, so you'd like to you'd like to hope, yes. right? Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, the mo most important thing what you learn is not really language. It's more like uh, uh, engineering practices, you know, and, and if there's a new language, it's not really a problem. You know, you just learn it and then you, you use the knowledge you, you, you got, right? Uh, yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah. We shall see. We shall see. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, it's pretty popular. I think it's the eighth year in a row, most desirable language in on, on Stack Overflow, that, which is pretty impressive, right? Um, so I'm hoping that if if engineers are loving it, the, the rest of the world will start seeing it more and more, right? And it gains its popularity. I mean, it has. Over the last two or three years, I've, I've literally seen it firsthand. So uh, let's hope that trend continues. But um, anyway, unless there's anything else you'd, you'd like to talk about, um, I think, no, I think we, okay. yeah, that's fine. Good. Well, look, Jonathan, thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it. And um, some really Thank interesting you. insights. You've had such an eclectic like background across, I don't know, all kinds of different areas. So I'm hoping this uh, encourages some people to reach out. And if you've got questions, anyone that's watching or listening, please, hopefully you don't mind being contacted and, and ask some things. Um, let's see, let's con continue building that stuff. Um, I'll try and share as much information as you pass on to me that, that I can put out there for the world to see as well um, and, and kind of share that and get that going. But um, again, mate, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully no there's problem. part two soon. But cheers. Yep. Cheers. <laughs>